Well, once again, there is a large portion of the American population that was incredibly outraged by something that they saw in pop culture. And no, I'm not talking about the woke mob that Fox News usually complains about. I'm, of course, talking about conservative snowflakes who were incredibly offended by a new music video put out by Lil Nas X, along with something else that he did. Uh, now, the good news about this story is that maybe we can finally move on from Cardi B's WAP. What? The bad news is that I take it they're probably going to be fixated on this music video and this story for a lot longer. So I can't play the music video for you, but I do want to provide you with some context. So I'm going to read you a description of what the music video represents. As Out explains, Lil Nas X combines Greek mythology and biblical references to essentially tell the story of queer self-empowerment in this world. He traces an arc of being judged and condemned by society for his sexuality, eventually being killed and sent to hell. But on his way there, he reclaims his sexuality and harnesses his sexual energy in order to seduce Satan and take over hell. And given that Satan and hell have been long upheld as the big bads by conservatives and have been used as a warning stick to beat children into submission, this understandably caused issues. So the message of the music video essentially is... All right, if you say that I'm going to go to hell for being gay, it is what it is. I guess I'm going to embrace it. I'm no longer afraid of the devil. And in fact, when I get to hell, I'm going to seduce the devil by giving him a lap dance. And that's what took place in this music video. So Lil Nas X slid down a very long stripper pole all the way into the depths of hell. And he seduced Satan by giving him a lap dance. Now, messages of gay acceptance in and of itself in 2021 not necessarily the biggest issue that's not why conservatives are up in arms what really i think triggered them here for lack of a better word is the images of gay intimacy because we can tolerate homosexuals so long as they provide us with comic relief or they entertain us with their drag shows but the minute straight people are reminded that gay people are actually intimate themselves and they do have sex with other gay people, that's when you actually start to see this visceral response and this homophobia bubble up again. Now, that's not to say that straight people should be watching gay porn or something to become comfortable with gay sex, but the issue is that there is this double standard where heterosexuals can display their sexuality, not necessarily women as much as WAP demonstrated, but they can be explicit in the way that they describe their sex lives. But the minute a gay person does it, then it's like, oh, the icky factor kicks in. So that's what Lil Nas X did here. And to make matters worse, he then took things to the next level by announcing a pair of 666 shoes with human blood in them. And uh, this sold out in less than a minute. So understand what he's trying to do here. First of all, it's obvious he's trying to bait conservatives because if this is deemed some controversial thing, that's going to make people interested. They want to see what he's doing. And if they think that they're going to suppress it by condemning it, conservatives are, are wrong. But of course, they took his bait. They fell for it hook, line, and, and sinker. And the message here that he's trying to promote is great. He's saying, okay, you think that gay people are evil, they're the devil, then we're going to we're going to embrace that. We're going to embrace what you say is evil. So we'll sell these uh, demonic shoes, which I don't think actually look very good. Uh, but nonetheless, you know, I have zero fashion sense. Uh, but I, sh I just want to show you the response because if you thought that they were outraged over WAP, this is next level outrage. I didn't know who little Nash X was. Little thug, whoever. I, know, I, I had no idea who he was. We was riding this morning, Hudson said, well, you know who, what made him famous? I said, well, he said, you know, he was that horses song. Got my horses and whatever that song. I was like, man, that song got a cool beat. I'll never be able to listen to it again. Bunch of devil worshiping wicked nonsense. Pentagram wearing on your Nike tennis shoe 666. You think I'm gonna stand for that? You've lost your mind. You tell little Nash X I said so. Bunch of Satanism, bunch of wickedness, bunch of devilism, bunch of demonism, bunch of psychotic wickedness. Jesus Christ. Slow the fuck down, Greg. Listening to him speak gave me a headache almost. Huh. Cocaine is a hell of a drug. <laughs> This kind of sounds like cancel culture, doesn't it? Just a couple of weeks ago on Fox News, if you tuned in, they were talking about how bad cancel culture was and that, you know, we have to respect our cultural institutions. Mr. Potato Head, Dr. Seuss, the Muppets. But now they flip like that and cancel culture is good if we're canceling something we don't like. Lil Nas X and homosexuality and him glorifying the devil. But in actuality, he's not necessarily glorifying Satan so much as he's turning your attack against you. It seems like you use the devil 
for your own gain because you try to scare children into being straight, literally by threatening them with an eternity of hell. So, I mean, he's he's giving you a taste of your own medicine, but you don't like that. Now, even a governor of an actual state, Christy Nome, who has let COVID-19 ravage her state because she has refused to implement any measures, including a mask mandate, decided to respond to this because this, this music video and the sale of shoes by a pop star is more offensive than people in her own state dying. And she tweeted out, our kids are being told that this kind of product is not only okay, it's exclusive. But do you know what's more exclusive? Their God-given eternal soul. We are in a fight for the soul of our nation. We need to fight hard and we need to fight smart. And Lil Nas X then responded by saying, you're a whole governor and you're on here tweeting about some damn shoes. Do your job. To which she responded with a quote from the Bible saying, what good will it be for someone to gain the whole world yet forfeit their soul? Hey, Governor Nome. Question for you. Do you think that God, if he exists, which there's no evidence that he exists, but let's assume that he does exist and he's the God who you say he is. Do you honestly think he's going to be more mad at Lil Nas X's shoes or you letting COVID-19 just ravage your state, kill thousands of your constituents? Which do you think he's more concerned with? And as a governor, why are you weighing in on pop culture issues? Don't you have something better to be doing? like trying to stop people in your state from dying? How many people have these shoes killed compared to your government in action, your policies? Who's more evil in the grand scheme of things? The incompetent governor who lets her citizens die or the artist who very clearly is trying to bait conservatives into driving outrage over his product that will obviously increase demand for said product and draw more eyeballs to his music video? It's just astonishing. Now, of course, uh, Candace Owens weighs in on everything, so she decided to weigh in and make a fool of herself, tweeting out, we've turned George Floyd, a criminal drug addict, into an icon. Wow, what a nice thing to say about someone who was murdered. We are promoting Satan shoes to wear on our feet. We've got Cardi B named as Woman of the Year, but we're convinced it's white supremacy that's keeping black America behind. How stupid can we be? Hang on a second. So, if I'm interpreting what she's saying correctly... She's saying that the reason why black Americans are oppressed in America isn't necessarily because of institutionalized white supremacy that's existed for centuries in America. And in fact, we're stupid if we think that. The reason why black Americans are oppressed is because of shoes and music videos. We're stupid if we don't see it. I don't think you have the right to call anyone stupid if that's what you believe. Now, if that wasn't bad enough, she then compared Lil Nas X to a sexual predator saying, why has, oh, but I'm gay become a default excuse for immorality? It was Kevin Spacey's line when he was accused of sexual assault, Andrew Gillum's when he was caught with a hooker and crystal meth. Now it's the reason Lil Nas X needs to make a Satan shoe with human blood. Now, if you think that that's homophobic, um, it's not according to her because, quote, I have four gay cousins, all of whom I'm very close to and all of whom have made it through life without using crystal meth, sexually assault anybody or creating a Satan shoe. Stop blaming your immorality on sexuality. Yes, because making a Satan shoe to troll you is morally comparable to sexual assault. And yet this dipshit is asking, how can we be so stupid? I don't know. It's almost like you're part of the problem, aren't you? Now, Lil Nas X responded to her in the perfect way, saying, uh, you know, you did something right when she talks about it. And, of course, she then challenged him to a debate, because <laughs> why wouldn't she? But then it got a little bit more interesting, and by interesting, I mean homophobic and racist, because Caitlin Bennett, aka Gun Girl, aka the pants-shitting Nazi, tweeted out, it's weeks like this that I'm thankful to be blocked by Lil Nas X, to which he responded by saying, I still see your tweets, shitty pants. She then responded <laughs> twice to this in one tweet saying, the guy that takes up the ass from Satan wants to talk about shitty pants, and she also decided to get super racist by saying, do you still see your dad? To which he responded to her racism hilariously by joking about turning her dad gay saying, yep, and I might fuck yours. And I just got to pause for a moment. Lil Nas X is a top tier troller. They don't even realize that they're getting trolled by him and they're getting outraged and triggered. And two days from now, they're going to be complaining about cancel culture and how the PC police wants to, you know, sanitize everything and that nothing 
can be said, uh, you know, in American culture anymore without someone getting offended. Meanwhile, they're offended by everything. Uh, but she responded to Lil Nas X saying, I'm going to turn your dad gay by basically saying, oh my God, you're threatening to rape my dad. That's literally what she's taking away from that tweet. She said, Lil Nas X just threatened to rape my dad. Sounds about what I'd expect. <laughs> <laughs> And she then retweeted an article from a far-right news outlet about the supposed quote-unquote rape threat from a quote-unquote journalist who tweeted Free Chauvin, who, as you know, is the police officer who murdered George Floyd, which Caitlin Bennett then retweeted. And yet these are the people who are like, oh, well, you're immoral. You're the ones who are stupid. But yet Free Derek Chauvin, a murderer who we all watched kneel on the neck of an unarmed black man for almost nine minutes. Conservatives are like going out of their way to rip the mask off. I would say that it's unbelievable, but this is absolutely on brand for conservatives. Now, conservative country singer John Rich, who just appeared on Candace Owens' show, tweeted out, Lil Nas X praises Satan, and I praise the one who defeated him for eternity, the Son of God, Jesus Christ. Oh, wow, how noble of you. Lil Nas X can still give his life to Jesus and be saved. Pray for him to do so. I just did. And then Lil Nas X responded by saying, praise this ratio. John then responded saying, I'm praying for you. Okay. Great. Um, so all of this, it just obviously exposes conservative hypocrisy to go from railing against cancel culture, Mr. Potato Head, Dr. Seuss, all these dumbass stories, to then quite literally becoming the outrage mob, I was going to say the woke mob, the outrage mob that they were just denouncing. Their hypocrisy is brazen. They are shameless. They don't even care how silly they look. And Lil Nas X actually pointed this out, saying, I thought y'all didn't like political correctness. What happened? And he adds, y'all love saying we going to hell, but get upset when I actually go there, LMAO. Now my favorite, he tweeted out a Chick-fil-A version of his Satan shoe to appease conservatives. And uh, this one is just awesome. I love it. Um, so Lil Nas X made a friend out of me by doing all of this. I will say, though, uh, you know, the left is defending him now. But the minute he starts flaunting his wealth, we will turn on him. So just FYI, Lil Nas X, if you want to if you want to keep us uh, or you want to stay in our good graces, then don't be a rich prick. But nonetheless, like the message that he is trying to espouse about actually uh, being himself I think that's important. And when there are so few role models who are gay and actually proud of who they are, things like this actually do make a difference in the lives of gay people. It does. Because you're less likely to hate yourself if you see other people who are like you. So the fact that Lil Nas X is explicitly saying, fuck your feelings, we're here, we're queer, and we don't care what you say about us, we don't care that you say we're evil, I absolutely love it, I applaud it, and I think that this is art that is worthy of praise.